bog bodies. And I think a lot of it is because he still has a face. You know, like for some reason, the way he was, he was laying on his side, and he just looks like he's sleeping. Right. And, I mean, to look, you can see his facial, his whiskers on his face. It's crazy. It's insane. It? All the wrinkles, he's like sleeping, his face is a little smushed. Um, and it, but it's like he just looks like he's asleep. Like he can it's open his eyes. Yeah, it's just insane. The um, fact that his hair is still there is underneath like crazy his cap, but he's totally naked. Other than so, like, was he naked or was like? Is it that he had a belt on? I mean, but maybe his clothes just like disintegrated. Dissolved, disintegrated. Leather maybe wouldn't, but because it's tan, it's like yeah, his skin. So maybe fabric would. Right. So um, they've been doing like lots of tests on a lot of the bodies that they found. Um, and, like, they have yet to find any usable DNA out of any of these corpses. And I think a lot of it is because they're soaking in this mixture. It's absorbing into Other all of their... Things. Right. Because I know even with mummies, when they try to get DNA, they have to try to find a place that hasn't been touched by people. Someplace they try to go, like, inside one of their bones and extract oh. it. Um, and a lot of it, too, is just, like they're coated with resins and things. So, like, that impedes the DNA. Like, it, it makes it, like unusable, like it's inclusive. So like they have yet, they, they're trying to do strontium tests and things on their hair so they can try to find out where they're from, which is kind of okay, cool. Yeah. Like they could say, oh, this person traveled. Most of them have traveled a distance before they were uh, inevitably and ended up dead. in the box. Yeah. Yes. But like the test they did on him, he was not strangled. He was hung. Okay. Um, and because he had like an intact hyoid and his Adam's apple wasn't broken either. Okay. So that if he they, he had been strangled because of the angle, the those would have been broken. But because he was hung, it Went was up. damage to the neck. Um, yeah. So he definitely was hung. He had no signs of a struggle. He had. It was like they just hung him up and he just took it. Like he wasn't. Yeah. His hands weren't bound. He just was hung. And it's like, why didn't he fight? Like you know, and they've done. Um different tests like you can they've done like what did he eat before he died so like That's he nuts. had yeah he had his last meal was a gruel they said it was made of like root vegetables different cultivated grains wild seeds like linseed and barley and a, a flower like herby flower like chamomile um the barley was actually infected with ergot so he had ergot infested it's a fungus on okay what's the ergot ergot um that's what they think happened. Like, sort of the theories about the Salem Witch Trial. Oh, okay. It's, there, it's it, like, it causes, yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. fungus that grows on barley specifically that yes. creates hallucinogen. It makes you hallucinate. hallucinate. Right. Yes. And it's, it's like, makes you go crazy and you hallucinate. So it's like, well, did this guy, was he crazy because he was eating ergot-infested barley and was hallucinating and acting nuts so they hung him? Right. Or was it something they gave him on purpose? So that he wouldn't fight back or whatever. Right, or, or if he or was... kill him. He's, like, out of all of them, like, a lot of the theories is most of these bodies are bodies of sac people who were sacrificed. Um, and a lot of them think it was to promote fertility of the land. Okay. Like, most of them were found, like, they, like, they were sacrificed in the winter, probably to speed up the coming of the okay. spring or to make sure they have a good harvest or a good planting for the lots of plants and, and good weather yeah. and things like that. A bounty. His, his body is the one I would definitely say probably was because of the way he was found. He was found laying on his side with his knees up, kind of curled in a little bit of a fetal position, but his face, he has this serene look on his face. Like, for somebody who was hung, you would think he would be distressed. Right, and he, yeah. he is, and he looks like he's almost smiling. Well, and, like, they probably felt it as an honor to do that, probably, the sacrifice. Right. Like, then was, like, an honor to do that for your people. And like another thing too, in the Iron Age, barley was used for like as a special occasion grain. Oh, like okay. you didn't just eat it all the so time. So he wouldn't have given it to a prisoner. Right. It's not something that they would have fed to right. somebody who was, it's like. He got something special. Yeah. And, and also in the Iron Age, because we're talking like they're primitive, more primitive peoples, they were mostly pagans. Um, this is pre-Jesus. Right. So like especially in Northern Europe, they were all like druids and yeah, pagans, pagans and we're, we're talking people. like vikings that are in the norse mythology probably here in, in denmark um but bogs are considered special places and bogs produce methane which will make a white 
like they're called swamp lights. Oh, okay. And so people would see those. I think they're will o' the wisps, which are like little fairy lights. Uh -huh. So they would associate the bog with a holy place. Like a magical. Place right. It was like oh, there's magic the gods, there. That's where the gods live. You know, yeah. it was like one of those. Plus, people would go in and never come out. <laughs> sure. So I mean, you get <laughs> stuck in the bog and you die. die. So, but I mean, most of these bodies, the specifically the bodies they found, have all died in a violent way. So it makes you think that they would sacrifice them and put them there because it's a sacrifice to the gods. So you put right. them into this bog. It's like a special thing. But yeah, and, and like in 1950, they performed a full autopsy on his body. That's crazy. Because he had all his organs. Had, had all his organs. Yeah. Crazy. They found, like, I'm going to go through some of the different um, bodies they found over time. Like, um, one of the oldest ones dates back to the Bronze Age, which we're talking 2000 BC. This is 700 years before Tut. Before oh my God. Tut. Right. And they've, like, they radiocarbon date them, you know. Um, some of them from the Iron Age. This guy was Bronze Age. Um, it's a Cashel man. Mm. Um, and I didn't find a lot of information. I didn't really look up a lot of information on him, I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, he's fine. Um, but in Oct on October 20th in 1835, okay. um, workers in the Harald Schar <laughs> Fen. Sorry. Yeah, it's those SKJ yeah, it's together. It's like, what? You, I, I can't. My mouth doesn't go that way. But um, this is in Denmark. They came across a well preserved body of a woman. She was about five foot two. She had high cheekbones and dark hair, but she was like me. <laughs> yeah, she was clamped to the moss with staves through her elbows and knees. Oh. So like she was like, and there was stuff on her, like wooden so they, posts and stuff yeah. on her. But she was like held down in the moss, oh. in in the peat. So they put her into it. And right. Keep her she in was there. laid there and and whatnot. And at that time, the king thought. Like, there was an older, like, a historian from 1835, so right. they didn't have a lot to work with. But he, th for, sh for sure, that it was Queen Gunhild of Norway, and she died around 970, and she was drowned in the bog by King Ferdinand or something. So her husband. Yes, he had her brought over from from Norway, and he acted, he didn't want her anymore, so he killed her. He well, brought her to the bog and drowned her and left her there, right? Wife, so he thought for sure this woman who's the right age, was this queen. So, right. like, the king at the time built, like, an oak coffin for her in the palace and put her on display. Oh. And she was called Queen Gunhill forever. And then they uh, carbon dated her and found out that she was actually lived in the 5th century. They, they dated her in, in 1977. Okay. And they found a thin line around her neck where she had been strangled. So like they like this isn't the same woman. This was a sacrifice this again. Sacrifice. Yeah, this one so was this person wasn't drowned. No, she was definitely Hung. strangled. Okay. Like either like with a, they would hold it with a garrot. Okay. So that that's like people who are strangled manually or with a garrot. It's different. It's like an, a, across the front of the neck instead of up. Yeah, the hanging yeah. is more under the jaw. Under the jaw. Right. So there's. Um, Seamus Haney is an Irishman. I like it. Wrote a series of poems inspired by bog bodies. Oh. You can find them. You go on his Wikipedia page. He's got tons of stuff. I'm going to do that. Yeah. I was going to quote him, but I, I'm weird. I don't want to, like, I, I'm afraid to quote any of his poetry because I don't want, like, copyright infringement right. or anything like that. So That's right. I'll go leave you that. Go, go look it. it up. It's pretty cool. They're very morbid and maudlin because they're it. about, like, corpses found yeah. in the bog. It's Fantastic. Cool. I love it. And he's Irish, so. I'm Shame sure it, he was, you're my friend. He was probably drinking some beer or some whiskey yeah, some, if he did it. Something good, I'm sure. Um, we're going to go to Cheshire, England. Cheshire, Cheshire. Yeah, England. Cheshire. The Lindo Man. There's three Lindo. There's a. There's three thing people that they call refer to as Lindo Man one, two, and three. Okay. Lindo Man two is actually a woman. What's Lindo? Lindo is where they're where found. They found? Okay. Yep, in Lindo. Yep. The Lindo Bog. The Bog. So May 13th, 1983, they found a skull, and while they were digging in the peat, peat workers in this area of the bog, um, the skull still had an eye, had some hair on it, and they thought that it was a missing person who was had been presumed dead named Malika Rain Bart, and she disappeared in 1960, and this was 1983, and they found oh. this skull in this bog. 
and they're like, oh, I bet this is that missing woman. So they found a skull in the bog. Right, a skull. But Just the, the skull with the eye and the hair. It wasn't there long enough to... Okay, you're going to tell me more. Yeah. Sorry. Jump in the head. So her husband at the time, who everybody suspected of killing always his the wife, husband. It's always the husband. he was already in prison for something else. Oh. And he had been bragging about how he killed her and buried her in the back garden of their house. And their house was right up against this bog. So, like, their backyard was part of the bog. Oh, okay. And once they found this skull, they went to him and said, listen, we found a skull in the bog behind your house. And he totally confessed to killing his wife. His wife. That skull was actually 2,000 years old. (laughs) (laughs) What? (laughs) So it wasn't his wife. It obviously was not his wife. No. But... He still his his uh, conviction still upheld uh, based on his confession. confession. Yeah, so he confessed to it. So like, like it's not like, like it wasn't her skull. It doesn't matter. You still said you did you it. You said you did it, you dummy. They took it and they're like, yeah, we found a skull in the bog. Oh yeah, I killed her. Yeah, it was like one of those. Yeah. You, <laughs> <laughs> so did they? Well, here's my question: Did you hear if they found his her body in his backyard? They had never found oh, her. They never found her. Oh. No, it had bog. Didn't yeah. matter. Somebody a hundred, two thousand years will find her. Yeah, right. That's right. The murder yeah. victim. Yeah, <laughs> that's where they go in the bog. <laughs> okay, so the uh, on August fourth of nineteen eighty four, and we're talking. This was like two hundred feet from where they found this skull of this okay. other woman. Peat cutters. They found another body, and this oh. one was also really well preserved. He's the one that looks deflated. Like okay, when you look him one. up, he's flat. And he looks like he gets steamrolled. Right. And when they discovered him, he actually started to decay. Like they saw his oh. body started to like break down. So they recovered him with Pete until people could come and get him. But um, he, they found him to be in his mid twenties. He had his facial hair had been clipped really short with clippers. He had huh. manicured nails, and his throat had been slit. <laughs> he had head <laughs> trauma. Chills. Possible strangulation. He was found face down. So it's like. Was he murdered? Because, I mean, you you think a little overkill here. Well, like, he had been smashed in the head. Right. He'd been strangled. strangled and then and throat. his throat was slit, too. And it's like, okay. It's a, it doesn't sound like a sacrifice. Because to they, me, it does. Especially yeah. if he's face down. And, like, the other, like, the tall man, he was found in, laid in a position. Right. But the like, rope was still around his neck. And they think that, like, the nurses, the earth mother, they think that he was a fertility sacrifice to her. And a lot of... The old, um, like, art that they could find of nurses, like, all the women all have these braided, um, cord. Cord, like, they had these braided necklaces around oh. their neck, and that's what his, look like. the leather cord that strangled him was braided and was left there. So that's why they're, they're like, his really leads to being right. a, a sacrifice, where this other guy, I think he was murdered. That's a lot of violence happening. It is. Sacrifice. Yeah. They've done, <laughs> they've done the compl- they could know what he ate last, you know, and they could find out, like, um, they, they did, like, all these different things that could have been wrong with him when they were alive. Like, he had osteoarthritis and, like, all this really crazy, like... It kills me that they can't do that for yeah. bodies so old. I know. And then, like, now, if you found someone that late, you, might, you wouldn't be able to tell that. I mean, if you found someone buried 20 years ago regularly, you wouldn't be able to tell any of that stuff. An Elling woman, she was discovered in 1938 within, like, 200 feet from where Tallinn was found later in 1950. Um, and she was believed to have been hanged. She was about 25 years old. She lived around 280 B.C. So, I mean, she's another one in the same area. Right. Um, the Grau Ball man um, in 1952, he was found in Jutland, Denmark, in the same area. This is all the Jutland Peninsula in Denmark, okay. all in the same, like, general vicinity in the bog. Um, third century, so about 200 B.C. is when they figured he was alive. His throat had been slit. He was found face down. He was so well preserved that they could they took his fingerprints. Like, his what? hands are, like, I think that's the picture that you posted. Yeah. That's his hand, I think. Because his hands were so well preserved that they were able to take his fingerprints. Wow. Isn't that insane? I did see that picture, and it's crazy. Cause yeah. Because you can see every little, his fingernails. But their skin all, it's like, what the, what the, um, the bog does is it tans your skin so your skin gets really dark but the tannins turn your hair red 
So everybody they pull out of there is red hair. They're all ginger. <laughs> they probably weren't. Right. Some of them might have been, but they well, they, it makes sense them. because when you tan something, it gets it takes on a yellow, a reddish, orangish color. Well, I mean, even in Northern Europe, like red hair is a recessive trait, and it's.